Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the Budapest Queen Trap, and it is a good one. So the Budapest starts out with d4, knight f6, c4, and then pawn to e5. This is not the most sound defense by any means, so if you are going to play the Budapest, why not play a super fun trap? So after the pawn takes here on e5, usually black plays knight to g4. Gets the knight out of the harm's way, also attacks the pawn here on e5. But second best move is to play knight to e4, a very fun variation as well. They're usually not going to kick it away with pawn to f3. Their d pawn is already moved, so they're not going to be attacking this knight with that. And so how do they continue? Well, knight to f3 is pretty common to protect this pawn here on e5. They're up in material. You want to protect the center of the board. This makes a lot of sense. And this is where we start to lay the trap. It starts with pawn to b6. Now, this move is just asking our opponent, and it is the correct move for white to play queen to d5. This is attacking the knight here on e4, attacking the rook on a8, and it kind of looks like, what in the world is black doing? Do they even know, understand how opening chess theory works like they're just giving up tons of material little do they know that we have a trap for them we are going to play bishop to b7 yes the bishop is unprotected yes we want them to take our bishop so after the queen takes here on b7 then we're going to play knight to c6 if you're watching the video and you recognize black is not taken in material yet that is okay because we're looking to take the queen here on b7. Now the immediate threat that white has to worry about is black playing knight to c5. Attacking the queen. The knight here on c5 is attacking the a6 square, which would be the only safe square that white could go to right away. And so white could decide, okay, I need to start getting my queen to safety here. Let's start with the move queen to a6, but this does not solve white's issues. In fact, this is actually losing for white because black can play the move bishop here to b4. Now we'll look at two variations. They could play you know, knight to c3. They could also play bishop here to d2. We'll look at both of those options. Uh, they both lead to white's demise here, but we'll first look at knight to c3. Well, doesn't matter. We're going to play knight to c5, attacking the queen. Queen comes back to b5, and then just the move pawn to a6. Now, white has no moves. They are going to lose their queen. So let's say queen takes here on b4. Knight takes here on b4, and black should have an easy game from here. And also, black still has more threats. Knight to c2, check, forking the rook here on a1. Now, slight variation and if they play bishop to d2, uh, you do need to change it up a little bit. After you play knight to c5 and they play queen to b5, uh, you need to go ahead and take first. So that after they take with their knight here, you can just play pawn to a6. And now their queen is going to fall. And the reason for that is if you don't, if you just play pawn to a6 first, well, now they can take with their queen here on b4, take our bishop. And yes, we do take their queen, but then they take with their bishop. And you can see black has given up three minor pieces and a pawn for the queen compared to if you just look at normal when they played knight to c3 here and we played knight to c5 and then all of a sudden we play a6 and we take their queen, you can see all, we've only given up two minor pieces in a pawn for the queen. So very different, uh, much better situation. So just make sure if they play their bishop, you do take the bishop first check. So they have to respond to it. And then you play that pawn to a6. Okay, so we've seen from white standpoint that queen to a6 is not going to go well for them. So what other options do they have? One of them is going to be bishop to e3. Since they know the threat is knight to c5, they could just play bishop to e3 and say, yeah, I'm just going to attack that square right away. Uh, but very difficult for white to actually continue, I think, in this spot after bishop to b4 check. Now, a few options. We'll, we'll go through each of those. We have knight to c3 here. Probably the best variation for them. They could play knight to d2. They could also just bring the bishop back here to d2. Probably the, the worst of the options. And we'll go through each one. So knight to c3 here. Knight takes on... 
C3. And, and you can see this gets pretty rough here because if pawn takes on C3, which looks logical, well, bishop takes on C3, check, forking the rook. So bishop to D2, and then the bishop takes here on A1. So that's, that's not going to go extremely well. So how do they really continue from here? Well, they, they can't take, so maybe they play bishop back here to d2. It's just not a very easy situation for them at all. Now, if instead of playing knight to c3, maybe they play knight to d2. Okay, well, now we're just going to take with our knights, and, and they have two options. They could take with their knight. They could take with their bishop. If they take with their knights... Well, we're just going to play pawn to a5, and they can't really stop the move rook to a7 on the next move. And then the queen is going to fall. If they don't take with their knight, let's say if they take with their bishop here, uh, then we're going to go ahead and take with our bishop after the knight plays. Then pawn to a6, similar to pawn to a5. We're, we're looking to play rook to a7, and they're going to lose their queen. Now, uh, if you kind of run this through an engine, they might tell you that the best move is queen or castle on the queen side. It is extremely difficult. If you're in this situation from white to look at this and say, you know what? I'm going to castle on the queen side. <laughs> All the safety is completely gone. This knight on here, d2, is solidified by the bishop. I'm going to castle on the queen side. Then allow my opponent to play knight takes on c4, gobble up more pawns. Uh, this it seems highly unlikely that white's going to actual castle on the queen side and then play it effectively from then on out. So it is, I think it's very difficult if someone's going to play bishop to e3 to try to defend that. And then the last option, which is probably the best option, but is to play knight to d4. Now, the knight on d4 is attacking it from a, a different situation where white recognizes that after the knight takes here on c6 and then the pawn captures, then the queen could take here on c6 and that would not only escape the queen, but it would also check the king here on e8. But I still think there's a lot of threats that white has to deal with after knight to d4, which is the best move that white has because after bishop here to b4, how do they continue? They should continue with knight to c3. Black can always hope for the best case scenario, and that is to play king to d1. White should absolutely not do this. This would be a terrible move. This would actually be made in two. If you, if you were to run, a, uh, run into this in real life, uh, please screenshot and send to me because it would just be amazing. You can play knight takes on f2. They have to play king to c2. Then you play knight takes on d4, and this would be a checkmate. Probably not going to do that. Instead, you might see knight to c3. Uh, from here, though, we take with our knight here on c3, and they're still in a pretty tough spot here because if they take with their pawn, we take bishop c3, check, and then we take their rook here on a1 with a fork. Okay, so that's not the best option. If they try something else, maybe they say, let's play pawn to a3, kicking the bishop away. Uh, because, uh, you know, this knight's going to move. It's going to be a discovered attack on the king here. Well, we'll just go ahead and take that bishop. That's fine, though, because we could play knight to b5, check, discovered attack, as as we, we thought. Yes, yeah, sure, okay, now the pawn takes. We take this knight here on d4, but we're also threatening to move knight to c2, check. So th they're going to have to deal with that. Maybe king to d1, rook to b8, attacking the queen here. Queen comes here to a6, and then we have the creative move, knight to c2. And they, they can't really take it because then they lose their queen. Knight takes here on b4, forking the queen here. Uh, but even if they don't take, the next move from black is to play knight takes here on b4. All of a sudden, white's king is exposed. We have a lot of threats with our knights here. We can get our queen involved into the game. So I think this is a pretty tough spot for white. Now, really, the best move that they have here is going to play knight takes on c6. The main reason you played knight to d4 is to take here on c6. But they still run into threats because after pawn to c6, black is threatening the move. Queen to d1 checkmate. So... White has to be extremely careful with how they are going to continue. They can't just play, you know, pawn to a3 because then they lose the game. So they have to be thinking about that. Really, the best move for them is to play bishop here to 
d2. After bishop 2d2, black can do last ditch effort of knight takes here on a2. Uh, remember, we still have the threat with our queen right here, so that they, they can't just take, they would lose the game here on uh, d2, but instead they could say, you know, bishop takes here on b4. Okay, knight takes here, and black doesn't have a terrible game. Now, the, the optimal move for, for white in this position is just to play rook to d1. You do want to protect this d file, uh, and this does exactly that. But you still have the queen here on b7. You got to get that out of harm's way. Uh, so you black uh, still has some threats, but white, if they play optimally, which you can see, there's a lot of tricky moves that white would have to come up with uh, to not lose this game. So I think this is a pretty fun opening and trap that, especially for black, like if you have this down and you knew every situation inside it out, it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to navigate this correctly. And you can just obliterate some people with this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the Budapest queen trap. If you actually, uh, deploy this and it works on your opponent, let me know. I'd love to see the game. Send it to me. Let me know in the chat as well. I think it is a good one. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.